So evaluate 2x minus 3 when x equals 4. What's the value of this expression when x is 4? So what would you do? You take the x out and you replace it with what? 4. four. If you remember the order of operations, we're going to do what first? Multiplication. 2 times 4? 8. 8 minus 3? 5. Let's try another one. Evaluate 2x plus 3y minus 5 when x equals negative 3 and y equals, I don't know, 2. Making things up. So here we go. 2 times. In place of x, let's put negative 3 plus 3 times. In place of y, let's put a 2. And there is the negative 5. 2 times the negative 3. Negative 6. Negative 6. Plus 3 times 2. Positive 6. And there's the minus 5. Again, you want to add 3 numbers? Let's look at the first 2. What's negative 6 plus 6? Opposite signs. Subtract them. You end up with 0. Take away 5. What's 0? Take away 5. Negative 5. Evaluate. C squared plus 4C minus 2 when C equals negative 4. C equals negative 4. That's negative 4 squared plus, oh, I don't know why I use bracket here, plus what? 4 times a negative 4 minus the 2. Now, what is negative 4 squared? Try again. Positive 16. Negative times a negative is positive. What's 4 times a negative 4? Positive times a negative. Negative what? 16. 16, good. Minus the 2. What's 16 minus 16 or plus negative 16? 0. 0 minus a 2, which is negative 2. So the evaluation, just replace the variable with the value we give you. Now, the same expression, I can say, what's the value when x is minus 1? You let x be minus 1, and you have a different answer to it. Okay. This is evaluating the expression. The tougher part is the formulas there. Let's take some equations here. What happens in life, sometimes you have an equation, and you want to solve it for something else. For example, so these are formulas here. We know distance equals rate times time. If you know how fast you were driving your car and you know the time, you can calculate the distance. For example, you decide to go to the parade today in Boston. And you drove, you called me, you just got there so you're not here, and you said, God, the traffic was horrible. I was going 45 miles per hour. That's your rate. And the time it took you to get there took you two hours. Now, normally to go to Boston from here is an hour and 15 minutes. But because the traffic was slow, it took you two hours. How far Boston from us? 
we go distance equals rate, which is what? 45 times the time, it is 90 miles. So this is really evaluating the formula when we give you what R and T is, the same as the previous one. But now we're gonna put twist on that. We said, we know this equation is good, but can you take that equation, D equals R times T, and solve it for T? Solve it for T. How do we solve this one for T? Exactly, you have a multiplication. When you have a multiplication, the opposite to multiplication is always division. If I want to solve it for T, I need to get rid of R. Since it's a multiplication, I'll divide this side by R and this side by R. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the same thing to the other side. And what will happen to that equation? The R's will cancel. T equals D over R. So you'll see both of these. Let me try another equation. The temperature in Fahrenheit equals 9 over 5, the temperature in Celsius, times the Celsius, plus 32 degrees. And let's say you have a friend or relative in Iraq. I don't know if we still have military in Iraq. Saudi Arabia, we'll use Saudi Arabia. We have some people there. So you have um, a relative who is in the service in Saudi Arabia. And they call us, the boy, it's hot here, especially in the summer. You go, what do you mean it's hot? It's 45 degrees, the temperature. You go, 45 is not hot. No, it's 45 Celsius. So when C equals 45, and this is not uncommon there in the summer, it can get up to 50. What's the temperature here then in our scale? So how do we find that? Evaluate this expression when C equals 45. So we go Fahrenheit equals the temperature in Fahrenheit, 9 over 5 times the 45. That's 45 over 1 plus the 32. We replace C with 45. Now I made it a fraction, 45 over 1. Why? Because when I'm multiplying a fraction by a number, I want to make them both fractions. And I tend to simplify first, then multiply it. That's easier for me. Top and bottom, by five this is one, by five this is what? Nine, what is nine times nine? 81 over one times one, one plus 32. That's 81 plus 32, which is what? Is that 113 degrees? So when your friend says, oh, it's hot here, it's 45 degrees, that means it's 113 degrees. We know that's hot. Right now, our book is focusing on solving these equations, formulas. Or we have another one. If you go to the bank and you put some money in the bank, we know the interest, if you have simple interest, principal times rate times time, PRT. Any business student here? You've probably seen that equation. P is the principal, the initial deposit. Let's say you went to Bank of America. And you go, you know what, I got $5,000 I want to deposit in your bank. So that's P, 5,000 bucks. What are you going to give me for interest rate? They go, well, Mr. Haddad, you've been a good customer with us. We're going to give you a good rate because we like it. We're going to give you 1.5%. And that's actually a good rate in today's market. I remember when it was like 5%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 1.5 and time is what? 
Uh, let's say I'm going to leave them there for 10 years. So how much interest? Interest equals principal, which is 5,000, times the interest rate. I got to change percent to a decimal. From pre-algebra, you move the decimal point two places to the left. 0 0.015 times the number of years, which is what? 10. So 5,000 times 0 0.015 times 10. You're going to make $750 worth of interest. So at the end of 10 years, when you go to the bank to get your money, at the end of 10 years, what the bank should give you is your $5,000 back plus the interest, which is what? 750, you should get back 5,750 bucks when you go to close that account or cash it. Hmm. Let's see what the bank does with that money. Joe comes in and goes, you know what? I need to borrow. He wants to borrow 5,000 bucks. He needs, Joe needs $5,000 to buy a car. A used car. And let's say it takes the money for 10 years. The bank won't give you 5,000 for 10 years, but let's use the same 10 years. So the bank took the 5,000 from you. They're gonna hand them to Joe. Joe, go get your car. It's a used car, so the interest rate they're gonna charge Joe is gonna be, it's not gonna be 1.5% for a used car, probably 7.5%. And the time is 10 years. So how much interest Joe has to buy uh, pay on this loan? He's taking a loan from them. So let's see, what is the interest now Joe got to pay Bank of America? Interest is the principal, the 5,000 he's borrowing, times the interest rate, 0 0.075, times the number of years, which is 10. And he owes them interest alone, 3,750 bucks. Bless you. So if he goes to pay the loan at the end, at the end of 10 years, Joe will have to pay, this is Joe here, gonna pay the $5,000 he borrowed plus the interest, which is what? 3,750, he has to pay him what? 8,750. Look what happened. The bank just took the 5,000 from you, hand them to Joe. They're gonna give you interest to you, what, 750? And they're gonna charge Joe how much? 3,750, the bank just made how much? $3,000 on your money, just took it from you, hand it to Joe. That was it. Credit card is about 18% interest. If that was a credit card, that means they're getting about six, dollars $7,000 just by taking the money from somebody, handing it to somebody else. It's not even their money. That's depressing. <laughs>